Ladies and gentlemen, live from Kelvin University, it's The Tonight Show! Hello and welcome to The Tonight Show, where we are really feeling not having spring break last week. That wasn't a joke, we're just tired. But there's some exciting new stuff, so I should probably get to that. Even though you've never given a ship about boating news before, the Ever Given, or as it's more commonly known, that big boat that got stuck has finally been freed. This is only the second ever time a momentous event has allowed passage through a waterway in Egypt during Passover. Disney announced the cast for the Obi-Wan series this week, and it looks like the hottest Jedi is coming back. And I'm not talking about Ki Adi Mundi. In addition to Ewan McGregor as Obi-Wan, Hayden Christensen will be reprising his role as Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader. Sam, you just ruined the movie. Adrian, the film came out in 1983. Still. Earlier this week, a squirrel broke into a church on Mackinac Island and destroyed a historic crucifix. We're hoping that the mammalian members of the Calvin community don't take a cue from their friends in Mackinac and go nuts and unleash their furry fury on campus. Finally, President Biden has doubled his vaccine promise, telling citizens they will be able to gather early in July. This means families will finally be able to get together for a barbecue and fireworks in order to celebrate the annual holiday that is July 10th, John Calvin's birthday. We'll be right back with an interview with Brent Williams. All right, I'm joined right now by Brent Williams, who's the director of the Center Art Gallery. Brent, thank you so much for joining me on The Tonight Show. Absolutely, thanks for having me. Um, so you work over in the CFAC, kind of mm -hmm. like in the lobby, there's that nice glass area, mm -hmm. and that's the, the art gallery. What exactly do you do? Uh, in what, so, yeah, what do you do? Yeah, what do I do? I do a lot of things. Mm -hmm. I kind of wear a lot of different hats. Um, the art gallery isn't just the space in the CFAC. Mm -hmm. um, so I can talk about that a little bit initially. Oh, yeah. It's a 2,800 square feet of kind of exhibition space. It's split up into three spaces. So we've got this really big gallery in the back, tall ceilings, all those mm -hmm. things, and then two smaller galleries up front. And so part of my role with the gallery is just to kind of oversee uh, the regular rotation of shows, the selection of artists, um, and how we want to program out all of those different kind of gallery exhibitions. Mm -hmm. So this year obviously has been a little bit strange uh, yeah. in terms of how things are set <laughs> up. Uh, but we try and find um, artworks that speak to each other or artists that are interested in different things. Mm -hmm. um, and we try to find ways to connect those to people all over campus and different academic groups all over campus, visitors to campus, whatever it might be. So getting you to think about a different topic um, in a bunch of different ways. So in the past, some of my favorites have been in, like David Wallace Haskins did an installation of kind of experimental kind of sculptural installation art uh, where you got to participate with the artwork was it uh, the mirror one yeah, the, oh, mirror, the video so mirror cool. with kind of <laughs> yeah. regular repetition of things. Yeah, um, We've done bees, um, okay. so artists doing different work with kind of bee exhibitions. We've done space, Mars, mm -hmm. all kinds of things. And then in the future, we're looking at all kinds of exhibitions related to, uh, well, coming up in the fall, um, metalworking and thinking about okay. how it applies to chemistry and engineering potentially oh, cool. and things like that. Um, and then the other piece of the gallery is we have a permanent collection here on campus. We have about 2,000 art objects. 
projects. Oh. Um, so we, we get to be kind of caretakers of those. Some of them are purchased, some of them are gifted to us. And so they're up all over campus in public spaces as you walk mm. around. If you see a little tag kind of in the lower right corner, that mm -hmm. gives you some more information about the work, but that also kind of identifies them as a collection piece. Oh, cool. And so um, some of them aren't out or can't be out all the time just in order to take care of them, uh, but some of them are, are up all the time. So we get to oversee and kind of install and switch mm -hmm. those out as well. Cool, I didn't know that was part of the, uh, the part of the gallery. Yeah. Um, yeah, because I've seen like Professor Hoig's like photographs and mm -hmm. downstairs in the in DeVos, or mm -hmm. um, I think Professor Hedinga has some photos uh, by the English department. Yep, yep, and there's um, artwork all over campus, yeah. right? There's like two million square feet of of building on campus, yeah. And so we try and find spots that it's can be regularly rotated, or it speaks to what's going on in those spaces. Yeah. Um, and so it's been a really fun kind of legacy. Uh, to have here on campus and to interact with and, and speaks to the different things that students are interested in. So we do buy student work mm -hmm. uh, for senior shows um, okay. or different kinds of exhibitions on campus. Um, and then we're gifted work um, that people have collected over their lives as well. Nice. So uh, the, the art gallery this year has mm -hmm. also been a classroom. Yeah. How has that like impacted uh, what you have in that space, like what you have going on? Sure. Or so it's a big um, shift for us. Yeah. Like it's, it's just new um, and it's exciting. And we're, we're working right now to make it more of a permanent thing cool. that we get to do. Yeah. Um, so right now, yeah, we have a full docket of classes and I'm sure a lot of people have uh, different classes in there and it runs the gamut from biochem to art history. Oh, um, so it's a really nice, it's a big space, obviously. Yeah. Um, it's a much different experience for a classroom because you're in 35 foot tall ceilings and you, you echo a little differently yeah. and you just get to obviously walk through an art gallery. Um, and so it's been fun for us because we're closed to the public to just have a regular sense of activity of students coming in. Mm -hmm. um, and it's always a fun thing to hear students say, I've never been in this space before, mm -hmm. um, but they seem to really be enjoying it in terms of getting to learn in this kind of new environment. And I know the faculty are enjoying it as well um, as they get to kind of participate with the art and just have this kind of new experience. Cool. Um, so we, we are, we're currently working on getting it um, kind of permanently set as a possibility. So we have flexible furniture that we can kind of roll in and out. Um, we'll have sound that more is permanently in there and mm -hmm. projectors as well. Um, so we'll cool. have those options and it'll be great not only for classroom settings but also for gallery events, yeah. um, different kinds of programming that we can do, uh, ways to think about what's possible in the space. Yeah. So it's it's really exciting. That's, that's really cool. It's like there's a kind of a warmth in that space mm -hmm. that's not like in this space, for example, or like other spaces. I think just because of the the like the color tones of mm -hmm. the wood and the lighting. That's For sure, and we get to control that and kind of manipulate it. That's the thing that's really exciting about the gallery is mm -hmm. a bunch of the walls are just on wheels and we can kind of roll them around and change the space for every exhibition, change what's possible. We've got full control of the lighting so that nice. we can not only protect the work, mm -hmm. but create different environments, right? Yeah. So um, it's, yeah, there's just lots of options and uh, we hope people just kind of keep coming back and um, we're trying to bring a lot of variety so that regardless of what you're interested in, there's something for you to look at, something for you to check out. Um, and I always like looking at things over periods of time. So mm -hmm. rather than trying to see it all the first trip, just making kind of regular trips back so you get to kind of live yeah. with them and exist with them. It's pretty exciting. Cool. So uh, what do you have in the gallery right now? So right now we've got ceramic work up. Okay. Um, so two artists, Anna Gradonis, who is a faculty member here at Calvin. Um, she runs our ceramics program and then okay. she's also a drawing instructor. Um, and so she has a selection of her work. Um, and what it is for, for Anna is kind of a preview. Um, she'll be doing another show uh, next year. Um, and so this was a way for her to kind of test the space since we don't have regular mm -hmm. traffic. It could be a little more experimental. Yeah as she figured the space out. Um, and then uh, Rebecca Sweda, um, who is a Calvin alum, um, mm -hmm. 2018 Calvin alum. And then she went and got her MFA in ceramics from Cranbrook on the east side of the state. And what she does is she was a double major actually, actually in chemistry and art here okay. at Calvin. Um, so she's really interested in the science behind uh, mm -hmm. the, the ceramics the process. process. Yeah. Um, but also 
she's just kind of using some of those different knowledge bases to kind of inform her work. So she's been throwing these forms and then uh, slicing the front edge off of them to okay. kind of reveal the complexity of the thrown form and give you a slightly different uh, way of thinking about it. So uh, they're in these kind of fun groupings that, for you to kind of interact with and see. She was on campus uh, about a week ago, week and a half ago, okay. and she gave a talk for the chemistry department uh, talking about her experience of chemistry and art and how they merge. Cool. Um, and got some into the like really hard science aspects, but also just thinking about kind of the process and how they kind of interplay and, and connect to one another. Cool. So, yeah. Nice. Um, and then what are you like looking forward to? Uh, what do you got coming in soon? Or? So the, well, let's think about this. So the big thing that we have left this year is our senior show. Mm -hmm. um, those will get installed at the end of April and they'll be up for two weeks leading up to graduation. Okay. Um, just as a way to kind of celebrate our seniors, celebrate the work that they've been doing. Mm -hmm. um, so we take the whole gallery down, kind of clear it, set the artwork up um, and get it ready to go. Um, and so we're really going to try and encourage students to make a, a walkthrough of the space, get to see those space and celebrate um, our students. And then we're already planning for next year. Um, so a metallurgy, um, uh, two gentlemen, one who lives in West Michigan and then his, his friend, uh, one of his best friends, they do um, a series of like raised vessels and forms okay. out of metal. Um, but they have a tendency to just mail things back and forth to each other. Um, and they work on it and one works on it and then mails it back and, and then the <laughs> other one works on it. So it's kind of That's a cool. fun way of thinking about it. Yeah. Um, the forms are really cool. Um, it's just really kind of exciting vessel forms. And then we're still kind of figuring out what else we want to do next year. We've got some options and we're, we're trying to figure out how the new schedule plays into what we do in the gallery, mm -hmm. how we program around it, yeah. um, all of those pieces. So lots of exciting things coming. Um, and, and yeah, we're, we're just kind of pinning it down right now mm -hmm. as we speak. Cool. Uh, I'm going to take a hard turn here. Okay. What would you say to someone who uh, doesn't see the value or or like the importance of art in the hectic and kind of chaotic world we're living in at the moment? Wow, that's quite a question. Yeah. <laughs> it's a big so, question. For don't sure. I feel like you have to answer all of it. For sure. Well, I'll tell you a little more about right. myself as a way to kind of frame this mm -hmm. um, so you get my background. I was a business major in, in undergrad um, and I was, it was something I enjoyed. I kind of enjoyed the process of the business degree. Um, so it was business major with a computer science minor and an art minor. Okay. Um, and it's really kind of a quirky mix of yeah. things. Um, but I really enjoyed the kind of creative aspects of art, um, of looking, of thinking about things, um, of just seeing. Mm -hmm. um, and it came to, to really inform how I approached my business classes, how I thought about the topics that we were discussing in class. Um, I then went and got an MFA in three-dimensional art. Um, and the big takeaway for me in that was being asked to just kind of consider the world around us. Mm. Um, so using it as another lens to really think about um, what's important to me, um, how do I want things to work, exist, um, and I think artists do that. They, they're, they're simply observing the world around them, responding mm -hmm. to it, um, and asking questions. And I think that's what we ask of our, of our students, regardless of the subject, regardless of the topic. And so art for me is just a really kind of nice physical embodiment of that, that exploration, mm -hmm. um, of that kind of lo liberal arts learning and connecting and uh, exploring. So yeah. that's, that's kind of how I approach it. Yeah. Well, Brent, thank you for uh, joining me here on The Tonight Show. It's been real Absolutely. fun to get to talk to you. Thanks for having me. Yeah. Uh, we go now to our musical guest for the week.
We hope you enjoyed that performance. Thank you again to Brent for coming in and talking with me. That was fun. Are the credits on this side? Or are they on that side? I think they're on this side. Hey, look, there goes someone's name. Don't you can't switch it up. I switch it up. I make the credits. Yeah, but I could decide to use the side. Yeah, you could. That would be mean, though. <laughs>